you want to make money off of your app ideas? I mean, I, I think pretty much everyone wants to do that, but no one knows how to do that. Like how to integrate payment processing system to your app so that people can spend money on your app. I don't know how to do it either. Let's say I wanted to add some sort of payment processing system to my app. How would I go about doing that? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I think I'm gonna create a very basic, simple app and I'm gonna just see how hard it is to integrate something like Stripe to that app to make some money. So let's get started. As someone who actually has no clue how to add any sort of payment processing system to an app, I'm just gonna use ChatGPT. I'm gonna be as real with you guys as I possibly can. Just a video on how another developer would tackle trying to figure out how to do something they've never done before. I have absolutely no idea how to implement a payment processing system. Got a typo. There we go. So that I can monetize my app idea. I heard Stripe is a good service. How would I go about implementing that? I have a Next.js application. I lied. I don't actually have a Next.js application, but we'll build one. So let's just hit send. Stripe is an excellent choice for payment processing. And since you're using Next.js, you can integrate it efficiently. That's good to know. All right, so let's just get started. I think we have a good bit of information here that we're gonna use. Oh yeah, look at all this info. Let's go ahead and set up an app. All right, so we have a Next.js app cooking up. Actually, I think it's finished. Yes, it's finished. And I called it Lemonade, because why not let the first thing we sell online be Lemonade? Virtual Lemonade. All right, let's open this up. Uh, we could say cursor lemonade. All right, open this up. So this is our basic Next.js application. You know what I might do? I might actually let cursor take over. All right, so after a few Google uh, image searches to get a really cool lemonade image and a couple of prompts, like literally just one or two prompts to cursor to build out this little landing page, and here we are. I think this looks pretty good. Fresh squeezed happiness. The perfect blend of sweet and tangy made with real lemons and pure cane sugar. Buy now for $1. So clicking this does absolutely nothing. And I think this is good enough, right? Let's see if we can uh, turn this app into something where we can make some money, even if it's just a dollar. Let's just stay in cursor and let's just say, I've never used Stripe before, but I want to implement it so that when a user clicks buy now, we can charge them a dollar. Seems pretty straightforward, right? So it does look like it is starting off with npm install Stripe and then Stripe.js, pretty much just like uh, ChatGPT did. So it says to complete the setup, you'll need to create a Stripe account, get your API keys from the Stripe dashboard, create a .env.local file in your project root with these variables. All right, so let's do that first. Let's go to Stripe. So after creating my account, it's asking me some stuff. I, I can skip, but I'll just... It says, how do you want to start? And this is just a one-off payment, but it looks like we could set up recurring and build a platform or marketplace. So that's really cool. We did call the app Lemonade Stand. <laughs> so, um, all right, we're gonna click go to dashboard and see where our API keys are. Yeah, I'm not sure this is where I need to be either, but there is a setup guide down here and it says set up one-off payments. First option is choose how to accept one-off payments. So let's just click that and maybe we need to go through this. So there's three options of how we want to accept one-off payments. So there's shareable payment links, which use payment links to share a payment page with your customer over email, SMS, or social media. So this would be a link that I would send out to someone. So I don't think that would work. And then pre-built checkout form. Use checkout to embed a payment form on your site or redirect to a Stripe hosted page. That's not bad. That might not be a bad option. And then the last option is embedded components. So use elements to build secure payment experiences that perfectly match your business. I'm gonna go with this middle option, pre-built checkout form, that might be all we need. All right, so now create a one-off product. Okay, let's do that. This seems pretty straightforward, click add product. Okay guys, so all I had to do was verify my email address and instantly my dashboard changed and I'm instantly brought to this section with the API keys. So I guess that's what you need to do. Once you create your account on Stripe, just verify your email address and then you should be brought to your dashboard. That shows these two keys here that you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. So let's go here and create our .env.local file. By the way, please don't go and try to steal my keys. I'm gonna delete this after the video is uploaded. So is that it? Can I just like refresh and hit buy now for a dollar? Uh, okay, so we got something went wrong, but it does say processing here, which is pretty cool. All right, we do have an error. Let's see what the error is. All right, so let's just copy this and paste it directly into 
cursor. Uh, I see the issue. We need to use Stripe elements properly. Let me fix the implementation by using the correct element setup. All right, I'm gonna hit buy now. Pay a dollar. Okay, cool. So this is all coming up, which is really neat. All right, so after trying to put in my actual details to pay myself $1, um, I realized I kept getting issues. I kept getting errors with it. Like it kept um, erroring out and it didn't tell me anything why, just that it was throwing an error. So I had a uh, cursor write some better error handling logic. So this time when I tried it, it said that I was in test mode and I was using real credentials instead of test credentials. And then I thought to myself, well, duh, no one's gonna test these things when they implement them for their websites with their own stuff. I'm sure there's ways to test things, right? So um, it told me to go to uh, docs.stripe.com slash testing. So that's where we're at. Okay, so I think testing is actually pretty simple. It says testing interactively. When testing interactively, use a card number such as 42424242 and so on. Enter the card number in the dashboard or in any payment form. Use a valid future date for the expiration date and use any three digits for the CVC. So let's just try that. I'm not gonna put an email or a phone number. I have the test number in for the card. I put a futuristic date for the expiration, a random security code, and let's see if this actually works. Thank you, your payment was successful. Enjoy your lemonade. This is neat. Okay, so this is actually working. So the only thing I would need to do is figure out how to like turn test mode off. Now, obviously we didn't get paid, but I did take a look on the docs and a little bit of uh, chat GPT and cursor. So we are in test mode. I was able to replicate an actual transaction, but it's only in test mode. In order for me to actually get paid, I would just need to swap over my API keys from the test mode API keys to the live mode API keys. And in order to do that, you just need to finish setting up your Stripe account and then switching over the API keys and everything should work just the same. Thank you guys for coming on this journey with me to figure out how to add some sort of payment processing system to an app. I honestly expected a little bit more of a challenge. This didn't seem too hard at all. And that might be why we hear about Stripe so much these days because it's just so easy to implement. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.